I'm Jay and this is Camden Stitch and this is the second of two videos. Um, I started filming a massive long sew and tell of everything I've made since I started sewing and it was too long for one video so this is part two. Enjoy! Trotwood update. Um, she's sitting underneath um, the clothes hangers staring at the carpet. I, if you want to know why she's called Betsy Trotwood it's after a character in a Charles Dickens book. I love Charles Dickens. My next make, um, you might recognise the fabric. It's a green and navy stripe. It's exactly the same fabric that I just mentioned and this is actually from Fabricland because the textile centre had sold out of it so I finished up getting some more of it from Fabricland. This pattern is Butterick, um, look at the chalkboard, this pattern is Butterick 6318 and I've seen loads of bloggers make it and loads of people have made it on Instagram. It's that one with an amazing picture on the front of the lady and she's got it made up in black and white stripes and it's got this great big belt that ties across the front and I really really like it and this is the dress that I really wish I'd made as for my beginner's pattern because it fits really well, there's waist darts but no bust dart. Because of the way it's fitted, I didn't need to do a full bust adjustment, um, but it still fits really nicely because you're pulling it in at the waist with the ties, so even though it's a bit larger at the, at the top, it's, it's cinched in nicely. Um, it's just a really simple pattern and the instructions are written really well. There weren't any bits that I was tearing my hair out over. And I love how it finished up. It's, I think it's really striking because of the stripes. Um, and it's just a really nice summer dress. And it's one of those that, you know, when you go out in it and then people say, oh, I like that. Um, so it makes you feel good about it. And I really like my little flower button that I finished it off with. At this stage I have made a couple of other items but they're for blogs that I um, so I can't talk about them because they're for blogs that haven't yet been released so um, I'm writing for the Minerva Crafts blog and so I've made a couple of things that will be featured on their blog and um, I also have done a pattern test so I can't show you that item yet although it's absolutely lovely and I finished it last night and I'm really excited to show it you um, but they'll be forthcoming in future so and tells, I hope. So my jumpsuit obsession shows no sign of abating. So you'll know that the weather this year has been absolutely lovely or hell, depending on your um, on how you feel about very hot weather. We are very lucky in that we live in a new flat that's triple glazed, and it's been built for to be really eco efficient and to have very low energy consumption. But the downside of that, it's got these beautiful big windows that let in a lot of light, but it's been like living in a bloody greenhouse. And my sewing area is my cutting table and my sewing machines are right in front of three massive windows. So the heat in the flat, especially in the afternoons, has just been, I don't know, it's been about 35 degrees. It's been ridiculous. So I have been making garments that will be super, super light and easy to wear. This next garment, the pattern is New Look 6373 and it's another jumpsuit and I made it with this viscose that I bought when I visited Birmingham with the Sew Knots crew and this is from Birmingham Rag Market and it was either £1 or £2 a metre. Just not my normal style but I thought it was a bit unusual so I thought I'd give it a go, it was really cheap. The only problem with this is when I washed it for the first time, some of the black dye, you can see a tiny little bit there. I don't know if you can pick that up on camera. Some of the black dye ran into the into the paler pink of the flowers, but it's such a busy print, it's just not, not noticeable at all when it's on. So I decided to make this jumpsuit, um, and I did make a twirl of the bodice this time, uh, because I actually made a camisole top to sleep in because it was really hot, so I used the twirl as a, as a cami. Um, because I didn't know if I needed to do a full bust adjustment and I don't. I mean, I'm an F cup, so there's a lot of ease in there, but it's it's got an elasticated waist, so there's obviously quite a lot of ease in the bodice. 
I think I originally cut the pattern out as a size 12 graded to a 14 at the hips and then I changed the top to a size 10 because it was a bit loose. Um, so I made it as a jumpsuit and I'll insert some of the pictures of me wearing it when I tried it on. If anybody knows how to solve the wedgie problem with jumpsuits please tell me because I can't imagine that I've got a longer body than the one that the, the patterns are drafted for but I find that if I cut my own size crotch then it, it would be wedgie central so I always drop the crotch down a bit on the new look 6446 after a tip from Lizzie B thank you very much Lizzie I watched your tutorial uh, I watched your sew and tell where you made that jumpsuit and I found it really helpful um, she mentioned that she's got a long body and so she dropped the crotch to the very lowest one which I think is a size 18 and so I did the same and I really did need to and I'm not as tall as, as her so I don't know what that's about um, but on this one I dropped the crotch and I finished up with MC Hammer pants there was too much fabric at the crotch but there was also too much in the legs it just looked it looked shapeless and too big. The waistline was falling too low, so although the effect is supposed to be slightly that, that sort of bagged effect, it was bagging right over and it looked pretty awful. And I showed my friend by phone and she was like, yeah, it doesn't look right. I wasn't sure what to do, um, so I decided to hack it into separate. So I unpicked the waist seam. And if you have a look on my blog, it tells you exactly how I went about doing this. When I tried the jumpsuit on, the waistline was falling quite low on me. It was sitting on my hips rather than my natural waist. And that was contributing to the sort of baggy crotch effect because the crotch was falling down lower. So what I did was I, when I unpicked the seam, I had overlocked the edge. I made a hem of the overlocked edge and then I inserted a large piece of elastic which then I fitted to fit at my natural waist point. So the whole end result was that you, I was basically wearing the trousers a lot higher on me. So it solved the baggy crotch and it gave me this sort of paper bag waist thing, which I'm not really sure that it works on me. But when I posted a picture on Instagram of it, somebody, um, Emma from the zipper foot, Hi Emma, very nicely contacted me and said that she absolutely loved it so it can't look that crap on me so maybe I should roll with it but it's just one of those things that I think I'm not sure if it's a style that really suits me um, but again a bit like the bateen dress I wasn't sure when I made these separates I do really like the top the cami top it's got this lovely flounce which I think is really flattering I think it's probably flattering whether you've got a big bust or a small bust actually um, but I wasn't sure if I liked wearing the two together it gives like a faux jumpsuit effect but I wasn't sure if because I'm sure whether the pattern would drown me but I've had a lot of compliments on it and then I've worn it a few times and again I felt quite comfortable wearing it so I think that maybe it was one of these things that was worth trying it's pushed me outside of my comfort zone and I finished up with something that I really like and looks nice so I'm really happy with that Okay, I bet your tea is either finished or cold um, and you're probably dying for a wee. So this is my final item, which I made again. I need to stop being such a vain bastard, don't I? I made again to meet with a group of sewists. So I did finally pluck up the courage to go and meet with the London stitchers. And I decided that I wanted some, to make something new because we were going to go for a picnic in the park and unfortunately the weather wasn't nice enough. But I thought, okay, well, what's not going to be nice and cool, but sort of nice and practical to wear for a picnic? And I thought, of course, another jumpsuit. I need another jumpsuit. I don't have enough jumpsuits in my life. I think I was enticed to make another New Look 6446 because I'd seen this fabric. It's from Fabricland and I just really liked it. I really liked the mix of the black and white and I love pink and red together because I like their sort of clash. Love it. um, it's so comfy to wear. I managed to get the fit better this time because it was the second time around making it. The finish is better. I lined it with a nice fabric. 
Um, I put some nice top stitching on it. I'm just basically really happy with how that came out. And I think, again, another little light bulb, bulb moment, feeling like where you can envisage your garment design and then you make it and it's it's lovely and it's what you wanted and it fits you really well and you feel great in it and you know that's why sewing is so wonderful so yeah I was really really happy with that that's it for my massive sew and tell thanks ever so much if you stuck with me this far um thanks to Betsy for her little cameo appearance she's by the door she likes to listen on I think she's a really nosy cat my next video will be a fabric haul from when I visited Abacan recently, which was the happiest day of my life. Um, so that should be out in a few days. If you enjoyed this video, please give me the thumbs up and please press the subscribe button. It makes me really happy and hopefully I shall see you next time. Bye!